Pledge of Allegiance. And Kirsten will lead us in that. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Kirsten. Um, the uh, reminder to silence your cell phones and meeting documents are in the binder next to Commissioner Kelly. If you need a listening device, uh, Robert uh, will be able to help you with that. With that, we'll go into uh, routine business. Item one is consider a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. So, we have a motion and a second to approve the agenda. Any changes or corrections? If not, those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion unanimously passes. Item two is to approve the County Commission minutes of July 30th, 2013. Approve the minutes. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the minutes. Any changes or corrections? If not, those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion unanimously passes. Item three are bills to be paid in the amount of $651,134.62. Pay the bills with the comment. Second the bills. We have a motion and a second. Commissioner Barth. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Today's bills include uh, uh, $54,000 for uh, XL Energy for facilities on this campus, another uh, uh, $12,000 for the uh, jail and electrical bills, and uh, $10,000 to Sioux Falls Utilities also for electricity. So that's uh, uh, you know $75,000 right there. And then we had $400,000 in highway uh, materials and expenses. Thank you. Any other comments about the bills? If not, those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion unanimously passes. There are no reports today. The next item is personnel. A is to approve the routine action. Good morning, Kerry. Move the routine action. Is second. there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second to approve routine action. Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion unanimously passes. Item B is to recognize significant employee anniversaries for August 2013. Carrie Deaver. Good morning. I have the following people celebrating 10 years of service this month. Steve Funk, a tax and license technician in the treasurer's office. Jackie Rasmussen, senior deputy public defender in the public defender's office. Stacey <laughs> Teason, who is our homeless advisory board coordinator in human services. Krista Leitholt, a sergeant in the sheriff's office. Rodney Axum, who's a lieutenant in the jail. And then we have the following celebrating five years of service. Marlon Schlenker, a tax license technician in the treasurer's office. Karen Wildreyer and Martha Dargan, also tax and license technicians in the treasurer's office. Patricia Allen, who's a custodian in facilities. And Sophia Gotti, who's also a custodian in facilities. So our thanks go out to them for their years of service with us. Thank you, Gary. Are any of those individuals here by chance? No? I believe so. Very good. I will move to the next item. Item C is to recognize volunteers and county government for July 2013. It was a banner month in July. I think we're pushing close to 300 volunteers for July, so numbers higher than I've seen before. So a particular thanks goes out to all those individuals in those areas. Absolutely. It's an awesome number of people who uh, make a significant difference for county government and the county we live in, and thank you for that service to us and everyone else. So thank, thank you. you, Carrie. There are no application for abatement today. There are no notices and requests, and there are no planning and zoning notices today. The next item is petition for compromise of lien. John Peckus. Thank you. This is on DPNO number 28354 in the amount of $2,217.29, and DPNO number 52116 in the amount of $521.50. The applicants currently are coming to Minneapolis County requesting a compromise of the lien upon a release of $1,369.50, which is approximately 50% of the amount due and owing Minneapolis County. The couple currently have an opportunity to purchase a home on a contract for deed, and they would like to settle this account before the closing. Uh, of course, uh, the first DPNO, 28354, is for liens incurred between 1992 and 2004. It includes public defender, public advocate, and court-appointed attorney charges. A substantial number of partial payments, I've noticed that, totaling $2,118.13 were received and credited to the liens between 1998 and 2004. 
DPNO number 52116 is in the other applicant's name, and those charges were also for court-appointed attorney services, public advocate, and public defender services, and those charges were also incurred between 2004 and 2011. Uh, only two charges were incurred between 2004, and both amounts were quickly paid off. The home they are attempting to purchase is located on 18th Street in Sioux Falls. The purchase price is $144,000. Uh, the applicant indicates that there is the closing date has not been set because there are several liens and judgments that have to be resolved prior to the closing. According to their application, this is the couple's first opportunity to purchase a home after being renters for many years. Uh, currently, one applicant is unemployed and the other applicant receives approximately $46,000 in VA and Social Security disability benefits. Uh, some of that is related to uh, child support, which is uh, taken out every month. Couple is fifteen thousand in assets and three thousand four hundred in liabilities. I'll make that motion. I'll second it with a comment. There's a motion and a second, uh, Commissioner Heiberger. Um, just looking back at what they paid in the past, they did try to diligently pay off their liens, and they paid. If you put it all together, I think they paid more than sixty-five percent of what their outstanding liens were. And as um, Commissioner Peckus mentioned, this is also a um, veteran. The husband is a veteran who gets disability payments and um, is unable to work and for that reason I've supported this. I also need to say I believe that one of the applicants is in the uh, Commission room today and if she wishes to address the Commission she can do so from her chair. Uh, she does she won't be on camera. Uh, she doesn't have to come and identify herself but if she wishes to address the Commission she can do so. She isn't required to of course. Absolutely. Is the uh, applicant willing to make any comments? Thank you for coming and thank you for your comments and also thank you for trying to make a difference in paying these uh, off. We do appreciate that. We had everybody paying off 65% of their liabilities to the county. We would be in no financial concern. So, so thank you for your efforts. We have a motion and a second to approve the agreement. Is there any comments from the commission? Any if not, uh, let's do a roll call vote. Please. Commissioner Barth? Aye. Heiberger? Yes. Kelly? No. Peckus? Yes. Benega? Yes. Motion passes 4 to 1. Thank you. Uh, we'll go to the next item. The next item is opportunity for public comment. Anyone's here today that would like to make comments about anything that's not on the agenda, uh, we'd be happy to hear from you now. Anyone have any comments? If not, we're going to go to regular business. Regular business. Item number 10 is consider a motion to authorize the chairman to sign an agreement with Lincoln County for electronic monitoring and home detention services. <coughs> Good morning, commissioners. In front of you, uh, you have in the memo explaining everything and a contract for service uh, to provide home detention services and electronic monitoring to Lincoln County. GDAI is expanding. Lincoln County uh, signed a resolution to implement with us back in January, and we've been working toward this point for the last six months. Uh, I'll take any questions. It looks like um, home detention is going to be about we're going to 37.50 per day per youth, and if you look at the last year and a half of their uh, statistics, it'll be about an average about two per day. Any questions for Aaron? Commissioner Barth? So to this point, has Lincoln County actually had more in custody at the JDC? And are they also then trying to reduce that number? Yep, they're beginning. Um, I don't know that they've had more, probably. But what they're doing is they're going to implement the JDAI model. Um, we have a couple of commissioners and the sheriff now on our uh, policy steering committee for JDAI. And they're looking at reducing their reliance on security attention as well and using alternatives more. Any other questions for Aaron? Is there a motion? So moved. Second. A motion and a second to approve the agreement. Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion unanimously passes. Thank you.
Item 11 is consider a motion to authorize the chairman to sign an easement granting Golden West Telecommunications <coughs> access to the south 20 feet of Genie Drive, lane adjacent to lot 6, block 4, Hartford Heights Edition, section 25, Township 102 North, range 51 west of the 5th p.m. Uh, Minnehaha County, Robert Wilson. Good morning, Commissioners. Robert Wilson of the Commission Office. Um, this item came to our office's attention uh, after the notice of hearing for the vacation of a portion of Janine Drive was published a couple of weeks ago. Um, Golden West Telecommunications has uh, some underground utilities buried in the, uh, uh, under the area that is going to be vacant. And they, they noticed that, obviously have a, a particular interest in being able to maintain access to work on their, their equipment down um, at that location. Uh, for that reason, they have um, asked for an easement that you have listed in your, uh, your documents there covering a uh, uh, portion that is legally, an area legally described in the easement and shown in a map uh, on the last uh, page of your drop box. Um, this uh, easement has been reviewed by both uh, State's Attorney's Office and Julie Risty. Um, there was a question uh, early on if it made a difference whether or not you acted on this easement before or after you act on the uh, uh, proposal of the road vacation. My understanding is that that does not make a difference. That can be, can be done either way and, and be in, in full force and effect and no, uh, no complications either way. Stand by for questions. See any questions, Commissioner Barnes? You know, this facility was probably placed in the public uh, right of way or public easement uh, prior to this, uh, doesn't that grandfather through? Uh, or do we have to actually act separately to create this? I, I guess I I can't tell you if this easement is is being strictly done out of an abundance of caution on on their part on their portion, or if uh, this um, would be uh, grandfathered in. I know um, this this was uh, obviously brought forth by Golden West when they saw that, um, that this road would, would be vacated. And I, I, I know there's, my understanding is there's no issue deal, doing it this way. If there's a alternative way that could, it could also be accomplished and, and maintain their access to it, I'm, I'm not aware of that. Thank you. Any other questions? Is this in the city limits of Hartford? In Hartford Heights. So, so it's a right of way all the way through there. Or I, I mean, looking at the plat, it just I, who owns it? The county? Hmm. Or is it the homeowner to the south? Or if it's right north, it must be north. This is upside down. Good morning, Pat. Good morning, Pat Herman, Planning and Zoning. Um, the road was dedicated to the public when the plat was done in 1977. Nobody really gained ownership. It's, we all own it. Um, if it's vacated, it'll split half and half, and you know the property owner to the north will get half. The property owner to the south. But but Golden West wants an easement. Golden West get, okay. wants an easement, and they are looking at all their where all their lines run in this area, and this one just happened to come to the forefront. But they will probably coming be coming forward with more. I think they just want to get them on record where they have their easements, so in the in the future there's not a problem that they need access to those. Thank you, Pat. Any other questions for Robert or Pat? If not, it'll be looking for a motion. Move to approve. Second. A motion and a second to approve the easement. Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion unanimously passes. Item 12 is consider a motion to approve two tandem accident <clears throat> trucks from I State Truck Center at a total cost of $225,622 and two dump bodies and hydraulics from Northern Truck Equipment at a total cost of $148,730. DJ Boothy. Good morning, Commissioners. DJ Boothy, Highway Superintendent, uh, requesting to purchase two additional tandem accident trucks uh, off of the bids that we received earlier this year. Uh, every year as part of our long-range plan, we identify an equipment purchasing uh, 
program or equipment purchasing list for the next several years. Uh, to date, in 2013, we've purchased everything off of our large equipment list uh, with the exception of uh, two SUVs, uh, three pickups, and a large stormwater pump. And so we have already purchased our tandem ax axle trucks. Uh, we purchase or we plan on purchasing two additional trucks next year and uh, we have identified several pieces of equipment uh, in our current fleet uh, that uh, are due for replacement or well overdue for replacement. Uh, I think I told you during the budgeting process that we have uh, three million dollars or so worth of equipment that is past due on its replacement schedule. Uh, the pieces of equipment that we would wish to replace with these two pur with the purchases today our uh, 1960s era's Oshkosh uh, plow trucks that were originally military trucks. Uh, they are used very, very infrequently uh, if we were to receive record storm events and, and we have a whole bunch of snow on the ground, uh, those can be used. Uh, but on a regular basis, they're not, they're not used at all. Our equipment uh, people, they go and exercise the equipment uh, probably monthly, I suppose. Uh, just to make sure that it's running properly in the event that it would be needed. However, uh, as far as regular operation during the winter months, they are not used. And so, uh, if you have any questions about the purchase, I can answer them now. Uh, also, I wanted to uh, just briefly summarize some of our financials that we've been discussing recently. Um, we reported a few different numbers uh, between the auditor's office and the highway office. And we met last week to kind of get together and make sure that we were on the same page as far as those go. Uh, to the end of June of this year, uh, we projected all of our unexpended expenditures and unreceived revenue. And we project that at the end of the year, we will have a balance in our highway fund of $5.32 million. And of course, that's higher than uh, what we project or what we anticipate uh, when we do our budget. Uh, with scheduling projects and things like that, but because of additional revenue and, and less than anticipated project costs, uh, we have uh, a higher than projected balance as of December 31st, 2013. So um, I think that that should be considered in your consideration for this purchase. If you have any questions, I can answer them now. Commissioner Heiberger. DJ, am I correct in saying that these were not vehicles that were on this year's budget, these would be an addition to this year's budget because you have extra funds. That's correct. And essentially what we are, are planning on doing is is moving the 2014 purchase in 2013. And then in 2014, we would hope to move the 2015 plan purchase into 2014. So we're just purchasing two additional trucks in 2013. Commissioner Kelly. Uh, this more for Kirsten, but how do we get by without rebidding this? Uh, the, the bids were awful close back in what, February or whatever it was. Um, now we're awarding to that successful builder in February. The, the Does that cut out the other guys? Or? Well, the statute gives you a certain amount of time to uh, take the same bid set, and we're well within that time for that. So that's what makes it legally permissible. So. Other questions for uh, DJ? If not, I have one. Uh, DJ, when you prioritize your equipment issues, obviously this was on that list. But as far as how does that fit into your prioritization, if you will, of bridges versus equipment? And at the very end, you have to come up with the cash, regardless of its equipment or bridge issues. And in previous conversations, we've been kind of behind on what you considered the need to get those bridges done. Mm -hmm. So couldn't that same dollar amount be used for bridge replacement or repair? Again, as I discussed during the budget meetings, uh, we have the budget and the dollars available for these projects that I'm wanting to do. Uh, we do not have the people available to administer those projects or construct those projects. And that was evident with my request for additional employees on the bridge crew uh, that, that uh, I had for the 2014 budget year. Uh, I don't think that this purchase of 
$374,000 will have an impact on, on the infrastructure, the bridge infrastructure specifically. Well, I have to tell you, I don't agree. The issue will be is that if we have a bridge issue, that has a higher criteria for me than equipment needs that may or may not get used. I know we're behind a year, but uh, it's not like these are disabled and unrepairable equipment uh, trucks. So at this point, I have some concerns about where we're at with the whole bridge project list because that's been a high priority, I think, of the commission to get those done. And a third of a million dollars is a third of a million dollars. So I'm kind of concerned about whether we use this for trucks or we use it for bridges. And whether we have the people or not, uh, if we need the money for bridges, that is number one for me. Commissioner Heiberger. I was just going to say, um if we don't have the people to and I, I totally recognize your point if we don't have the people to build the bridges then this is a whole conversation that we should maybe have too again is because if you've got the money sitting there but you can't even afford to build them then the money just sits there well again I, I for part-time work of building a bridge you can hire someone to supervise that project as a consultant you don't have to hire full-time staff to do that and if we have a we're not going to have to build every bridge in the county in one year. So uh, if this becomes a need where we have to build a bridge, I think there's a person or two or ten out there that knows how to supervise that construction project. So it uh, doesn't have to be an employee. And I, I'm one of those individuals who likes to see consultants if, on a part-time basis rather than hiring full-time staff. Commissioner, if I may. Sure. Um, I, I also recognize your points. I don't think that there's anybody in this room that uh, that would put the uh, status of our bridges uh, as a, <coughs> the status of our bridges as a higher priority than me. Um, given that, I am absolutely comfortable spending this expenditure on additional equipment, and and uh, we are working very hard at hiring a lot of consultants right now, working on bridges. All right. We already have uh, three groups of consultants designing bridges for construction for next year under the assumption that we can hire that person that has been budgeted uh, in January for administering the construction projects. And so uh, we're this year constructing more bridges uh, than I think have been constructed since Tom, Tom Wilson's tenure of, of 12 or 13 years with the department. And so we're making uh, very significant progress and I again I, I don't feel that this expenditure will in any way harm our efforts towards bridge reconstruction and I don't disagree with you at all because I understand the, the work that you've done with those bridges and you've moved that process along really well it, it's certainly now formalized organized and, and is uh, well done but uh, you have a list of bridges that you're going to need to work on next year that could be moved into this year or at least start that process with this $374,000. And uh, I see that as a higher priority. It's just a philosophical issue between uh, whether you do bridges or whether you do equipment. And uh, if we have another Baltic bridge in the next few years, uh, we'll be happy that we uh, prioritize bridges, I think, rather than equipment. That, that's understood, and, and just for noting uh, your comment there, we will be bringing three agreements probably within the next two or three weeks for design of bridges that are not budgeted for this year but are to be budgeted for next year. You just verified what I was trying to accomplish. Uh, any other questions or comments from DJ? Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I guess I, this is from before you came on board here, but I can recall our uh, legislative auditors uh, commenting that we had, uh, of all the counties in South Dakota, we had the most uh, modern equipment. And that may be a commentary on the other counties, but uh, uh, it's, uh, we're, we're not getting by on the high 
I agree with that. The one thing that you scare me about is having once been an auditor, I sure wouldn't want auditors running our operation. <laughs> Everything is black and white in that line of work. Is there a motion? I'll make the motion. Is there a second? Yeah. Motion to consider the approval of uh, purchase of two tandem axle trucks in the State Truck Center at 225, 622, and two dump body hydraulics from where the truck equipment for 148, 730, based on the bids. Thank you, John. Is there a second? Is there a second? Motion dies for a lack of, sec of a second. Any other motions? We'll move no action. Second. We have a motion and a second for no action. Any conversation? I would. Commissioner Barth? That doesn't mean that at some future time we might not want to do this, but right now I think it's we're not ready to. Yeah, and again, I don't want to be negative. I think, frankly, with the other topic that you brought up about bringing us some bridge quotes in the next few weeks, months, or whatever to uh, get those bridges completed is um, part of what you've attempted and done a very good job of doing and that's getting the bridges back into a reasonable shape for safety issues and that safety issue is more important I think for me than equipment and uh, you're doing what is the right thing to do and uh, we appreciate that we'll continue to support that but I don't know that I'm ready to support it with uh, equipment dollars Commissioner now, Kelly? I understood that these trucks are in the 2014 budget. I believe that's correct, right? You're just trying to move it ahead of ways. That's correct. But then, yeah. And these trucks wouldn't even be in service until the winter of 2014, even with the purchase this year. Okay. Uh, right now we have a motion and a second for no action. Any other comments? If not, those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion unanimously passes. Well, I'm sure we'll see you again in a couple weeks, a couple months, whatever. Thank you. The next item is Minnehaha County Commissioner Liaison Reports. Any liaison reports? Commissioner Eiberger? I just have one, and it's short. Um, uh, back in July, there was some electrical problems out at JDC, and they had to have their control board repaired, which was finally completed within about the last week or so I think and so a bill a bill will be coming forward for about thirty five hundred dollars just wanted you to know thank you any other uh, liaison <coughs> reports Mr. chairman commissioner Barth I wasn't going to mention this but since we're fixing things the clock on the north side of the clock tower is out but we're expecting the only repairman in the country that can fix it to come to town and fix it in the near future. That's not Bob Colby, is it? No, no. it's not. <laughs> it no, isn't. Okay. Wisconsin. Make one more comment. Commissioner Heiberger. Just a reminder that the Sioux Empire Fair is going on. Thank you. Jeff and I will be serving tomorrow at the chamber luncheon. Okay. So bring your tickets and come and eat with us. Thank you. Other liaison reports? If not, let's go to new business. Anyone have any new business? Have a hold. Uh, anyone have any old business? Mr. Chairman, uh, we all got a copy of a yes. letter from a woman in, uh, well, her address is listed in Brandon, but uh, lived in the area of Valley Springs, etc., uh, talking about renaming this uh, waterway out there, which uh, there's a proposal we discussed, I think, last week. Uh, about naming it and uh, she feels that it has a name and she also uh, brings up an, uh, an incident uh, a century ago where uh, two people drowned up there and uh, I just want to bring it up for discussion. Commissioner Heiberger. I sent Robert a text last night and said maybe we should check with uh, museum archives and see if they've got some history on that that um, gives more details than what she sent us last night. It was very interesting. Commissioner Beckus. The person we need to contact is Bruce Blake because he's the one that kind of champions the, uh, what I would call the uh, uh, signage that we have around the community related to historical markers. 
and if in fact uh, this does actually um, uh, indicate that uh, uh, Annie Anderson lost, you know, several people. Uh, in fact, well, she lost all her children. Uh, but uh, if in fact uh, it's accurate, not only does it deserve to be named Lone Creek, but I think it also deserves to have Minneapolis County uh, Historical Society put a marker there to indicate such. Um, we have a variety of markers all over around this community identifying, you know, the historical place where somebody tripped. This is something that I think is, is more significant than that. So uh, I do think that uh, uh, it's appropriate, and I'm really glad that she sent us a letter and took yeah. the time to do it yes. because I appreciated yeah, sure. the story. Very thoughtful letter, and yeah. frankly, uh, gave me a different perspective than what we had originally for the Manning naming, if you will. And I, much to my surprise, there's a state board that actually goes through this process, federal board. It takes uh, years to yeah, do. That's very interesting. Mr. Chairman, yes. I just, my only concern then would be that the process will move forward without, uh, you know, with inertia. Robert and I did talk about this yesterday afternoon. He has forwarded this letter to that federal board for their response, and I think that would be appropriate so that we can get a response from them before we, quote, endorse it. And um, mm -hmm. I think the amount of time that she's put into this with it appears pretty accurate facts. Uh, this needs to be addressed and needs to be researched. So but Robert has that uh, process started already. So. That's all I was going to comment on is that uh, we're going to be uh, uh, making that contact <coughs> for this afternoon. And then I have also uh, responded to her already thanking her for her comments. Thank you, Robert. Any other old business? If not, we do need to go into exec session on a personnel item. And, and litigation. Uh, and litigation, is that correct, Kirsten? Yes, that's correct. So I would like a motion to go into exec session. That's my motion for litigation and personnel. Second. We have a motion in two Be seconds. Second. Those in favor of going into exec session say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion unanimously passes. Let's take about a five-minute break.